Good evening to everyone and welcome to today's session. 6 p.m. Chai Pe Chacha with Dr. Murli Bharadwaj. We will do the revision of uh, 50 to 60 questions every day. And uh, by March 14th, I promise to conduct around 150 hours of live online interactive uh, session with you all guys and add a little bit of energy into your preparation every day, every evening, holding your hand to become the winner. So, shuru karenge aaj ka pediatrics revision of what we are and this is a third class starting from uh, the 13th December, right? So, yes. These are all the neural tube defects except which one? So, you need to be very sure that uh, Myomeningocele, enencephaly, encephalocele, they are all called as the neural tube defects, not the holoprosencephaly. So what is holoprosencephaly, cyclopia, etc. So cyclopia is, there is a single eye located in the area which is normally occupied by the nose and the missing nose is located above the eye. So that is called cyclopia. Then what is holoprosencephaly? When there is an incomplete separation of the two hemispheres, then you call it as the uh, holoprosencephaly. Holo means single ventricle, pros means prosencephalon, and encephaly means brain. Now with regard to the absence seizures, all of you know very well, that absence seizures are usually seen in childhood. Three heads, spike waves are found in EEG. Hyperventilation can precipitate the absence seizures. But there is no postictal confusion as what you see in the case of uh, the GTCS, generalized tonic clonic seizures. Typically, in the absence seizures, the child will have a vacant stare. The teacher will say, oh my God, the child is looking through me instead of looking at me. That is the absence seizure. So, if you look at the EEG of absence seizures, generalized spike and wave pattern, more than 2.5 hertz, typically 3 to 4.5 hertz, lasting more than three seconds. So this is how the spike and wave discharge with a normal background activity of the absence seizure typically looks like neat PG is an image based MCQ. So there's a great chance that uh, this turns out to be a image based EEG which can come in the tomorrow's exam. So there is a pause in all the physical activity blank stare. There is a brief lapse of the awareness and there can be chewing or blinking motion and usually last one to ten seconds and this can occur multiple times of the day. So whenever absent seizures goes into status, what do you call it as? Pycnolepsy. It's called pycnolepsy. A lot of times the teacher will say Hey, Ramu, what, what are you doing? Why don't you have attention? Are you an attention deficit child? And it can be mistaken for daydreaming. So there are the differentials for the absent seizures. So staring, child stopping what she is doing like a standstill. And few seconds of unresponsiveness, usually less than 10 seconds. Confused with daydreaming. And during the absence seizure, if you hold the child and happen to shake him, there will be no response. 
But once seizure is over, immediately he become alert. So in the YouTube, type uh, such absent seizure. There are a lot of videos of absent seizure. A child may have seizures, many seizures. So repetitive blinking, eye uprolling, head bobbing, licking, swallowing, hand movements, or autonomic symptoms like sudden dilated pupils, flushing, pallor, rapid heartbeat, salivation, any of them can be the manifestations of the absent shisha is what you should remember. So how do you treat? Itosuximide. It is less toxic than valproate, more effective than lamotrigine, and the alternative drugs are lamotrigine and valproate, especially if there are GDCS coexisting with absent seizures. And once the seizure control is completely done, EEG will normalize. Achha bhaiya, a typical absent seizure is what is if an absent seizure has a myoclonic component and even a tonic component, suddenly there is a head drop and any normally 10 to 20 seconds, if it is lasting longer, you call it typical. And uh, post-tictal confusion, if it is there, you call it typical. Not provoked by hyperventilation or photic stimulation. And the typical absences are more difficult to treat. And if you do EEG, it is not 2.5 to 3.5, rather 1 to 2 hertz spike and slow wave discharges is what you need to remember. A 10 month old child presents with two weeks history of fever, vomiting, and altered sensorium. There are basal exudates and hydrocaphorus. What is the most likely possibility? Always. Basal exudates hydrocaphilus. You will only think of tuberculosis and PBM in this given case. Mycobacterium tuberculosis. That is the reason in case of the TB, why do we give dexamethasone TB meningitis? Because the TBM can lead to development of a lot of sticky by basal exudates. And that can cause the cranial nerves to get incarcerated within the exudates leading to cranial palsies. To avoid that, we give dexamethasone in case of TB meningitis is what you need to remember. Enzyme replacement therapy. I'm really very happy to see 16 online classmates keep punching the answers on them. Gorgeous disease. We do the there is an enzyme replacement therapy which is available. Looking's muscular dystrophy, X linked inheritance, and uh, what is it a disease of? It is a disease of sarcolemmal proteins, the dystrophin in gene. Bacterial meningitis according to the age. 0 to 1 kya organism hai, 1 ke baad kit kaun sa organism hai, favorite question of the examiner. So it is typically listeria monocytogenes is what you need to remember between 2 months to 12 years. So now doctor, let us become expert in this area. 0 to 1 month, it is the group B streptococcus called streptococcus galactosy. E. coli, Listeria, they all are 0 to 1 month neonate. 1 to 3 months, Listeria, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Listeria, E. coli, Gilius. 3 months to 3 years, Listeria, E. coli, GBS, Listeria, Streptococcus pneumoniae. 3 to 10 years, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Listeria. 10 to 19 years, Listeria. So this list doctor Jarumur Puchnevala question hai pediatrics mein. Attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. 
what are the what is the definition what are the components you should be very sure on adhd lack of concentration impulsivity hyperactivity they are the essential features so inattention the child has a hard time playing paying attention he will be daydreaming he does not listen easily distracted he doesn't care about the details he is very disorganized frequently loses a lot of important things often forgets the things so all this gajani you know the movie no gajani gajani ha huh? gajani features will be there but it is not mental retardation be very sure so only hyperactivity he cannot stay seated frequently squirming talks too much cannot play quietly then impulsivity so inattention hyperactivity impulsivity these are the three key cardinal features of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder is what you need to remember so you parallelly keep punching the answers doctor that way the session is more interactive and you are enjoying uh, studying along with me okay so i want all of you to i'm so happy glad to see almost all 18 online classmates please invite some more of your friends every day evening 6 pm humko bhi kaam nahi aapko bhi kaam nahi hum dono baithenge milke padhai karenge so that is the deal between us and please don't forget uh to visit this important portal www.onlinembbs.com agar aap onlinembbs.com ke upar aa gaye aap to you have the neat pg 2022 focused preparation 427 hours hd videos 10000 powerpoint slides notes 50000 flash cards revision 30000 neat pg mcqs everything is available so 427 hours of focused neat pg prep if you come to this there are 1500 videos so medicine may 39 hours pharmacology may 50 hours obstetrics gynecology 45 hours so you have all the lectures available so once you go to any lecture you some of the lectures are kept free for you to have a demo so you have a high density video and uh, there is an associated uh, powerpoint notes of this particular lecture so like this you have all 19 subjects covered in 1500 hd videos what more do you need to become a topper so please don't forget to uh become part of our crash course program so this 150 hours daily live online interactive session will keep you high spirited along with this you also have uh, 427 hours of hd video and uh, 10000 powerpoint slides available along with that you have 10000 very important mcqs as quiz tournaments on the incas app and 30 full scale grants need pg grants everything for a irresistible tempting prize of just 10000 rupees you will be able to get it so please call our helpline you know the number 9000868356 and try to join for this live online interactive crash course with dr murli bharadwaj good to see dr khan and many more now 
A 25-year-old woman had premature rupture of membranes, delivered a male child who became lethargic, he is apneic. And on vaginal swab culture, growth of beta hemolytic colonies on the blood agar are found. And they are found to be gram-positive cocci. What could be the most likely vaginal flora that can lead to the development of abortion? And also it can lead to development of uh, meningitis. It is streptococcus, agalactasy is what you need to remember. So, streptococcus agalactia is group B streptococcus. How do you recognize it? Beta hemolytic, it is present in chains. Camp test, Christy Atkinson Munch Peterson. Christy Atkins Munch Peterson test, it is called as. It is typically positive. Hippurate hydrolysis is positive. That is the characteristic feature of Gillen, of uh, group B streptococci. Don't forget, in microbiology, we have done an extensive revision on the online MBBS video library. One question, Jarur Ayagar Kalken PJ exam may about the gram positive organisms. How do you differentiate one from the other? So you have to be very strong and sure about this topic. So streptococcus agalactiae, bacteremia, neonatal sepsis, and uh, it can lead to a widespread immune reaction with vasodilatation, hypotension, hypoperfusion, etc. It can involve the joints leading to septic arthritis. It can cross the blood-brain barrier and lead to neonatal meningitis is the spectrum of the clinical conditions caused by the streptococcus. Agalactia is what you need to remember. So gram positive, catalase negative, bacitracin resistant, beta hemolytic, and uh, whenever the amniotic membrane ruptures, it lead to a early onset less than one week sepsis of the newborn with fever, increased respiratory rate, pneumonia, meningitis. Then late onset group B streptococcus means person to person after birth. It typically occurs at three months, but it is less severe. And the treatment is penicillin G is what you need to remember. So like this, what you need to do doctor, you have to make some quick, uh, your own handwritten notes for the last moment revision. That will really come handy, let me promise you. The most common agent, neonatal bacterial meningitis, streptococcus agalactia. H influenza was isolated from CSF. It was beta lactamase producing and resistant to chloramphenicol. What are the best antibiotic that you want to give? Third generation cephalosporin. Third generation cephalosporin. So you should know, Doctor, for the neonatal meningitis, what are the organisms and uh, what are the antibiotic of choice? Is the favorite MCQ of the examiner. Zero to one month, ampicillin plus genta, ampicillin plus cefotaxin. More than one month, less than two years. Vancomycin plus cefotaxim subtriaxone. 24 months to 50 years. Vancomycin plus cefotaxim or subtriaxone is what you need to remember. So, if you take the organism for streptococcus pneumonia, vancomycin plus third generation cephalosporin is great. For Nisseria, third generation cephalosporin or penicillin G or ampicillin is good. H influenza, only third generation cephalosporin. Listeria, ampicillin or penicillin plus aminoglycoside. And group B streptococci, ampicillin or penicillin plus aminoglycoside. 
for equal eye third generation cephalosporins so what organism what age group what antibiotic what duration tip top aapke tips mein rehna hai definitely aane wala mcq hai so doctor bart's hydrops fetalis why is it lethal hb bart alpha thalassemia mean severe most form is hb bart why it is lethal because the hb bart's have a such a high affinity for oxygen that they don't release the oxygen that's a problem so bhaiya different types of hemoglobins and their composition of the chains is a favorite question hba alpha 2 beta 2 hba 2 alpha 2 what is it called epsilon 2 hba alpha 2 gamma 2 Similarly, HB Portland one, Portland two, HB Gover and Gover two. They are called embryonic hemoglobins. HB H is beta four, HB Bart is gamma four. Commonly, one MCQ will come from the composition of these various hemoglobins. What is the structure? Jarur puchega. Thirty-year-old girl with menorrhagia. increase to bleeding always remember a bleeding diathesis in a boy think of hemophilia but bleeding diathesis in a girl think of von willebrand von willebrand because von willebrand is not x linked that's the reason it is not a exclusive problem of boys so that's the reason any girl with bleeding diathesis means think of What is the genetic cause? You will think von Willebrand. Von Willebrand factor is also required for one more thing. One is for the platelets function. You require von Willebrand factor for platelets. One more thing, von Willebrand factor is also required for stability of the factor eight. The third is the minimum von Willebrand factor is deficient. Factor eight is unstable. That is the reason there is a prolongation of the APTT with a normal PT because factor eight is important for APTT. And there also increased bleeding time because bleeding time depends on platelets. And even platelets are dysfunctional whenever the von Willebrand factor deficiency is there. Is what you need to remember. Leukocytoplastic vasculitis affecting children. Think of Hirschhorn lens purpura. Beta thalassemia. It is the hemoglobin electrophoresis which will help you to identify what is the chain composition and make a diagnosis. Eisenmenger syndrome. What is the meaning of it? ASD, VSD, etc. What will happen in them? Left atrial blood go into right atrial side. If it is ASD, that goes into right ventricle. From right ventricle, it will go into pulmonary artery. But if the pulmonary artery hypertension develops over a period of time, what will happen? There will be high pressure at the pulmonary artery root. high pressure in the right ventricle high pressure in the right atrium so instead of left atrium to right atrium blood will go from right atrium to left atrium and because of that bad blood uh, mix with uh, good blood uh, that lead to cyanosis so development of the cyanosis because of the reversal of the shunt of the blood from left to right to right to left because of the pulmonary hypertension is called eisenmenger so whenever eisenmenger is there the pulmonary veins are not like distended but there is a pruning of peripheral pulmonary arteries because the pulmonary artery is hypertension there is a dilatation of the central pulmonary arteries because of the pulmonary artery hypertension that is eisenmenger why you need to remember eisenmenger because you can operate asd you can operate vsd 
only until Eisenmenger develops. The moment Eisenmenger develops, you can't operate ASD or VSD. They become misfit for surgical correction. So that is the reason you need to remember Eisenmenger. ASD, VSD, PDA, they're all principally asinotic heart disorders. But the moment Eisenmenger develops, this asinotic conditions become cyanotic because of the reversal of the shunt. That is the reason you need to remember Eisenmenger. The most common type of total anomalous pulmonary venous circulation via a left atrium, high left ventricle, right atrium, right ventricle. Normally, who drains into left atrium? Pulmonary vein. Who drains into right atrium? SVC, IVC, drain into right atrium. This pulmonary vein, instead of draining into left atrium, both the right and left pulmonary veins, if they happen to join together to become a common pulmonary vein, and if that drains into right atrium instead of into left atrium, tap usko bolte hain, usko kehte hain, total anomalous pulmonary venous circulation. So how can that happen? Right and left pulmonary veins combine and they can merge directly into right atrium or they can go and blend into the SVC which drains into right atrium or they can go and blend with the IVC and then go to the right atrium, the common pulmonary vein. So accordingly you have a supracardiac, infracardiac or a mixed pattern or directly cardiac where they can directly the right and left pulmonary veins combine together form the common pulmonary vein and it just drop it into the right atrium. So different types. So examiner puts between all the three which is most common, supracardiac is most common. So some of you are going to become top cardiologists within a short period of time. So you have a pulmonary vein, the right and left pulmonary veins, the right and left pulmonary veins, pulmonary vein, very good. The dono milke vertical vein ban gaya, vertical vein ja ke SVC se blend ho gaya. And that's how the common pulmonary vein, which is carrying oxygenated blood, gone and mixed with the bad blood, deoxygenated blood on the right side. So normally the two pulmonary veins, the pulmonary veins, A pulmonary vein, A pulmonary vein, dono milke, ja ke left atrium mein jana hai, paisa nahi ja rahe, ye dono milke, vertical vein banaye, wo ja ke, SVC may blend hoke, ake, right atrium may agea. Kaikuana Garatena Vaisana Vaisa agea to Usko bolte hai. Total anomalous pulmonary venous drainage is what you need to remember. So the right and left pulmonary veins combine to form vertical vein which is carrying the oxygenated blood will blend with the deoxygenated blood from the upper body and blend into the superior vena cava and goes into the right atrium. This is called supracardiac type of TAPC, which is most common. Which is most common. So in this scenario, what? How will you manage this condition? So in this condition, what we need to do is you have a PDA, patent ductus arteriosus, right? So that is connecting once more the aorta and pulmonary artery. So a left wala oxygenated blood, right wala bad blood may jaake mix ho gaya to. Fir aap right se left ko usko reverse karna. 
So right side pulmonary artery and left side aorta are connected by PDA na. So PDA ko patent rakhega. Rakte, rakna padega. So that's the reason we give prostaglandins to keep the PDA patent so that because of the anomalous pulmonary circulation, the left side good blood gone and mixed with the right side. And by keeping the PDA patent, you once more bring the right side pulmonary artery bred back into the iota, back to the left side. Then one more way you can do is you can do a atrial septostomy between left and right atrium. You will create a hole. So that what will happen because of the TA, PVC, whatever the blood that has gone from left side to right side will be brought back from the right side back to the left side by creating atrial septostomy. So that is the reason atrial septostomy and the PDA, the main purpose is to bring back the blood from the right to the left because TFEVC is causing the left blood to go into the right side. Barme, you will do a, you will cut down anomalous pulmonary vein ko cut karke, you will direct the blood to go directly into the left atrium. That is a definitive surgery. So one of the favorite questions of the examiner, hum kal bhi discuss kiya, parso bhi discuss kiya, isi baat ke upar ki what is the temporary treatment of TAPVC? What is the permanent treatment of TAPVC? Temporarily, you have to give prostaglandins to keep the PDA patent. Second, you have to do atrial septostomy to move the blood back from the right atrium towards the left atrium. Permanent treatment is the anomalous pulmonary vein, a anomalous pulmonary vein. Right and left pulmonary vein join okay, ja rahe na? A right be jane ke liye, usko yaha kaat ke close kar le na. You will be closing it down. So that is the definitive treatment. Brother, now you are confident about this topic of TAPVC? Then figure out fate, appearance of TAPVC, everything you will understand if you basically understand these aspects. So, Typically, the uh, how does infracardiac TAPVC look like? So the both pulmonary veins will join. They form a descending vein, not an ascending vein, which carries the oxygenated blood and reaches the IVC, and through IVC, it finally goes into the right atrium. But actually, where are these pulmonary veins, oxygen that's supposed to go? It is supposed to go into the left atrium. But instead of going into the left atrium, it is going into the descending vein. And through the descending vein, it is going to the IVC. And through IVC, it is going into right atrium is what you need to remember. Achha. Whenever there is a severe infectious enteritis, what will happen? There is a damage to the villi. That lead to the deficiency of the lactase, disaccharidases. What is the most common renal cystic disease in infants? Unilateral renal dysplasia is most common. Now, a child with recurrent UTI, what is the most common underlying cause? Visico ureteric reflux will occur whenever there is, will present with recurrent urinary tract infections. So, what is the most common cause of renal scarring in a three year old child? Once more, you should remember any visico ureteric reflux leading to pyelonephritis is responsible for the renal scarring. So, if there is a non-functioning kidney in a child, how do you diagnose? So, always isotope renogram. Isotope renogram is the best way. Okay. So, DTPA renogram is the best way to make a diagnosis of non-functioning kidney.
Very good. I am so happy to see almost 23 online classmates. Our two mil gaya to hum quarter century marenge. Once more, mere pyare saathiyo. I want to tell you every day 6 p.m. Monday to Friday, 6 p.m. to 7:30 p.m. Saturday, Sunday, 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Saturday and Sunday. Invariably, earthquake ho, tornado ho, tsunami ho, kuch bhi ho. Dr. Murli Bharadwaj is available to spend time with you for the next 90 days. 150 hours of live session. Please inform all your friends. The best things in the world are always free. Remember, knowledge is supposed to be free. But also I advise you to join our uh, crash course program. You have 427 hours of HD video containing 1500 videos accompanied by the PowerPoint notes almost 10,000 slides, 30 full-scale grand tests, need PG wala. Then 10,000 MCQs has quiz tournaments on the Incas app. All these are made available for a throwaway price of 10,000 rupees. So take every opportunity to subscribe. In a child, non-functioning kidney, isotope renogram. So what is the most common presentation of a child with Wilms tumor? Please keep punching the answers doctor. Let us make it interactive. Nothing can beat YouTube. YouTube has everything doctor. That to free technology. I'm so proud and thankful to the YouTube guys. Hum ek dusre ke saath baat kar sakte chat window se. Seamless high density video broadcast. Ek rupee mein pay nahi kar rahe hum YouTube ko. We can, any teacher can meet any student across the world. Right? So now, the most common presentation of a child with Wilms tumor will be a asymptomatic abdominal mass. Is what you need to remember. So while the mother is giving bath to the child, suddenly something touches her hand and she re realizes that, oh my God, my child is having some mass. That's how asymptomatic abdominal mass is the presenting feature. In the infancy, the most common malignant neoplasm, neuroblastoma. Congenital hydrocaphalus. Very good to see. Dr. Amrita Kumari, very good. Amrita, you are from Rajasthan or from which part of the country? And what is your dream branch? Please punch it into the chat window. Thank you for all of you who are participating in today's session. Even for a teacher also, it is boring. Only when there is a crowd of students, any teacher enjoys delivering a session, preparing for a session. So thanks to all of you for coming to the session. Now, congenital hydrocaphalus. It is the aqueductal stenosis. Congenital, if you people have this aqueductal stenosis that will prevent the flow of the CSF. Very good. Amrita Kumari. <laughs> Dream branch is psychiatry. Very good. Very good, Amrita. I also left uh, six videos on flashcards in psychiatry on the YouTube. Please take a chance to do the revision. Uh, Amrita, so now, which bacteria often associated with neonatal meningitis? E. coli, Streptococcus, Egalactiae, Listeria, just before we have seen. They're all associated with acute neonatal meningitis. Unconjugated hyperbilirubinemia. 
which drug if you give the risk of carnicterus will increase typically if you give sulfonamide then sulfonamide will compete with the protein binding between bilirubin and sulfonamide so that displaces the bilirubin and that will lead to a greater amount of chance of development of carnicterus there is a vaginal bleeding on day 4 of the life of a girl neonate what do you want to do typically the maternal estrogen will go to the newborn female and that can withdraw after the birth and that can lead to development of the fourth day vaginal bleeding so there is no specific therapy required for that how do you best to do neonatal thyroid screening always cord blood cord blood assessment is the best way. so what is the treatment required for a one hour old infant with severe birth asphyxia you want to give glucose calcium gluconate normal saline they are all required for a one hour old infant with severe birth asphyxia is what you need to remember so now doctor let us quickly run through the management of a neonate with perinatal asphyxia so as house surgeons you might have seen a good number of cases in pediatrics in the delivery room obtain arterial cord blood for analysis transfer the infant to the nicu if at all abgar score is 0 to 3 at 1 minute if there is a need for prolonged bag and mask ventilation then chest compression was required then moving into nicu in the nicu maintain normal temperature and avoid hyperthermia good to see akila and many more who are all online so akila amrita and uh, achan khan please share this youtube channel and youtube link to all your whatsapp friends classmate groups study groups everywhere tell them that every day 6 pm invariably covid or no covid tsunami or no tsunami still we will have a chai pe charcha neat pg crash course class with dr murli bharatwar sir so you you tell your friends and bring more number similarly maintain oxygen saturation between 90 to 95% avoid hypocarbia avoid hypercarbia maintain normal tissue perfusion by giving intravenous fluids and maintain normal hematocrit and metabolic milieu and in severe asphyxia provide the calcium maintenance dose 10% calcium gluconate 4 ml per kg per day then you treat the seizures start oral feeding once baby is hemodynamically stable administer vitamin k to all infants who are having perinatal asphyxia is what you need to remember then some special investigations for perinatal asphyxia electroencephalography if you do eeg it can prognosticate long periods of inactivity more than 10 seconds on eeg bad prognosis brief periods of burns interhemispheric asymmetry asynchrony between right and left hemispheres and the isoelectric and low voltage <coughs> waves there all the bad prognostic eeg signs in perinatal asphyxia is what you need to remember similarly amplitude integrated eeg is another way amplitude integrated eeg is another special investigation cranial ultrasound ct mri there are all the various special investigations and there is also a role for therapeutic hypothermia what is the temperature 33 to 34 degrees celsius and uh, the infant should be at least 36 weeks moderate to severe encephalopathy it is initiated within 4 to 6 hours and continued for 72 hours and selective cooling of the head or the whole body need to be done 
So please don't forget. Good to see Shilaja, Akhila and many more. So keep uh, punching some good points that come to your mind, doctor, when we are having the discussion. So that kya hota na? Spadhaya vardhate vidya. Always competition brings that academic curiosity. Need be the entrance mein topper banne ke liye khali ek cheez hona hai doctor. Curiosity. Agar hum dull ho gaya aur painfully we are opening books then we are not doing a good job. But with excitement we open the book. We know what to finish in the book. And we have a friend with whom we can discuss. And dekhte, 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 970 topics. If you don't have the 970 high yield topic list, please call our helpline today only. 9000-868-356, our helpline number. And try to get that list of high yield topics. Ek topic ke baad ek topic khatam karo. In fact, all these topics are made available in the online MBBS.com video library in the 427 hours HD video. 1500 videos are made available. Please take every chance to subscribe to our crash course. So one of the newer mode of therapy is prophylactic phenobarbital. If you administer this, it is being shown in case of the neonatal asphyxia cases to improve the neurodevelopmental cognitive outcome at three years of age. In congenital adrenal hyperplasia, I don't know how many of you attended yesterday's class. It, the video is still there on the YouTube. Please take a chance to do the revision. We have a complete revision. So it is the dexamethasone which is used in congenital adrenal hyperplasia. Androgen insensitivity syndrome, otherwise called testicular feminization syndrome. Actually, karyotype is XY, but testosterone receptor level resistance will be there. Because of the resistance, the testis cannot be able to descend into the scrotal sac. So they become hidden in the inguinal canal, undescended testis. But still their testosterone converts into estrogen. The moment the estrogen is there, breast will develop. Because of the breast, they will be mistaken phenotypically for a female. But genotypically they are XY with the undescended testis. That is androgen insensitivity syndrome. The protective effect of the breast milk are all because of those secretory antibodies, IgA antibodies. Those who did not attend yesterday pediatrics class, please go back to that video which is still available on the YouTube. Humne developmental milestones ka marathon review kiya kal ke video mein aap revision karke Aapka comments liko, aap share karo aapke doston ki saan. 10 month old child, he can stand alone, he can play peekaboo, he can pick up a pallet with the thumb and index finger. When will a child can build a tower of 3 to 4 cubes? So you should remember doctor, the child picks up a string between thumb and finger occur at 10 months of age. He can release in a container 10 months. He has a mature grasp at 12 months. He has a precise release without pressing on surface at 13th month. He builds tower of two, two cubes, tower of two cubes, 13 months. Tower of three cubes is 16 months, sweet 16 months. And he turns the pages of the book one page at a time. So if you are a daddy preparing for the or a mommy preparing for the need PG preparation, your child will be turning pages for you and you can study, right? Huh. 
Nowadays, children, they also know how to browse the uh, Google Chrome. Uh, future may need PG entrance may puchega. YouTube online classes and channels kab malum padega bacho ko. That may become a developmental milestone question in pediatrics in future. Be very sure. A child is below the third percentile of the height. His growth is normal, but chronological age is more than the skeletal age. Skeletal age dekha jiya, dekha gaye to bara saal ka hai. Magar date of birth certificate dekhe to 16 years ka hai. Magar unka skeleton to bara saal bache ka skeleton hai. If the bone age is that of a 12 year old, but the chronological age is that of 16 years. What is the diagnosis? Constitutional growth delay. So doctor, you should remember, I'm going to take five more minutes of your time on this very important topic called growth retardation, dwarfism, short stature, which is the favorite MCQ of the examiner in pediatrics. Between the age of 5 to 16, what is the bone and joint that you will assess to know the bone age? Elbow joint between 5 to 16. Capitulum will appear by one year. Medial epicondyle ossification center by 5 to 7, trochlea by 10 years, lateral epicondyle by 10 to 11 years. And the three centers, capitulum, trochlea, lateral epicondyle, unite to form conjoint epiphysis by 14 years. Head of the radius, it unites at 16 years and it appears at 5 years. Upper end of the ulna, which also unites at 16 years, at 9 years, it will appear. Both forensic medicine may, pediatrics may, anatomy may, if Tino may, examiner aapka kaan pakdega. So there are two things you should know. Constitutional, sorry, constitutional growth delay, constitutional growth delay and familial short stature. So, sir, what are the standard treatment guidelines for pediatrics for cold and uh, acute gastroenteritis? Yeah. Jap Jyot Singh. Very good. I'll uh, prepare for that question and uh, try to do a Quick revision of that in the tomorrow's class, definitely. Vijay is, hi Vijay, good to see you. So doctor, please tell your friends and you also come every day evening 6 p.m. Okay. Every day, Monday to Sunday. Now, constitutional delay, familial short stature, dono mein height is low. Constitutional delay ka dusra naam hai. Late to bloomer. Late to bloomer. Jara 8th class, 9th class mein chotu hai, sab log chotu bol rahe hai. Maya suddenly intermediate 11th class mein, he comes to the adult head. So, very good Vijay. Thank you so much. I am humbled by your compliment to know that you got seat in pediatrics. Thank you so much. So, the difference is in constitutional delay, the bone age is delayed, not in familial short stature. The growth rate is normal in familial short stature, but the growth rate is slow in constitutional delay. That's the reason they're called late bloomers. The height age is same as the bone age. But the height age is less than bone age in familial short stature. 
and the height prognosis is good because they are only late bloomers. Constitutional delay one. Magar febrile short stage hai. Wo chotu hai. Sada sada ke liye chotu rahi jayega. So that is the difference. So this is one of the favorite MCQ, Dr. Any entrance you go. Constitutional delay versus familial short stage. So once more, there are some more differences. Constitutional delay is more common in boys. The length at birth is normal. And by three years, you will discover that the percentile is slowing down by three years. Whereas constitutional growth delay, it starts falling less than fifth centile in the first three years itself. Then there is a family history of short stature in female short stature. Whereas constitutional growth short stature may, there is only a delayed puberty in the family history. Patient stature is average in constitutional short stature, but Familial may even parents are short, child is also short. The height velocity is normal in constitutional growth delay. Puberty is delayed in constitutional growth delay. Most important thing you should remember this one. This one. A pick white page in notebook may 100 pages, white pages, notebook may lick later. Bone age is equal to chronological age, which is more than height age. That is familial short stature. Or a bar below, bone age is equal to chronological age, which is more than height age. Oh, what a familial short stature. Whereas chronological age is more than bone age, which is equal to height age. Ye what a constitutional growth delay. That is what you have to nail down. They go, Dr. Sir. Every topic may five six points nailed down karna nailed down wala points kya hai dekh lena har ek topic may unless you nail down you should not leave the topic like that there are 957 topics please call our helpline and get the list of that 957 topics and of course once you subscribe to online mbbs.com video library as a part of complement in this uh, crash course program, you will get all the PowerPoint notes and uh, the topic list and HD videos for you to do the revision. The final height, if you look at the familial short stature, is short but normal for the target height. Whereas constitutional short stature, the final height is normal because of the normal growth in the prepubertal time. So that's the point. So, doctor, chronological age means actual age of the child. Height age means it is the age at which the height of the child is 50th percentile. Bone age is an indicator of skeletal maturation. So, that's what you should understand. Finally, two things you should not forget, doctor. Delayed bone age versus advanced bone age. Kya fraction? What are the causes? Constitutional short stature, hypothyroidism, celiac disease, growth hormone deficiency. Ye dono endocrine hai. Celiac disease, GIT ka hai problem. Or constitutional growth delay. Ye teen cheezo mein. It is the delayed bone age. Gurpreet Mahinder Singh is saying, sorry sir to interrupt, but sir, how can I know the topics for this daily course? Please call our helpline, Gurpreet, 9000868356. Typically, we have one week, one subject. A pahla week started from 13th December. By this upcoming Sunday, we finish pediatrics. Pura 600 MCQs hai pediatrics mein, mai khatam karke revision karunda. So please call our helpline, subscribe to our online live classes along with a complimentary HD video, PowerPoint slides, etc. Okay, so you will know 
clearly in the next 90 days how is going to be our journey every day evening at six o'clock in the live class okay but after the class is over just go back to the hd video library on the online mbs.com try to do the revision quickly you know our time worth about come in 90 days but 90 days is a beautiful time with which even you start from scratch today also you can achieve advanced golden age precocious puberty congenital adrenal hyperplasia premature adrenal or any overgrowth syndromes like beckwith wiedemann syndrome marshall smith sort of syndrome etc so i leave the literature for you doctor this is one important table very important table sure shot anewala mcq hai sure shot mcq in the tomorrow's need pg pediatrics mein kitne questions are there between 10 to 15 questions hai na aur 10 to 15 mein agar growth short stage growth retardation ke bare mein question nahi puche to mera naam murli bhardwaj nahi hai definitely aane wala hai main almost this is 22nd year uh i had been mentoring the medical students i have almost mentored 2 lakh medical students in the past 22 years every time the story the things that you need to cover the tensions about the short time available large syllabus to finish they're all same story saal badalega magar situations badalega nahi right so that's the reason but if you are smart preparing student i can guarantee you 90 days is a great time you don't need more than that so bone age you do standardized x-ray of the left hand and wrist so delayed bone age implies delayed maturation and improves height prognosis advanced bone age means accelerated maturation and predicts early cessation of the growth now doctor what are the features of prematurity in a neonate premature children can typically present with no creases on the soul abundant lanigo empty scrotum because of undescended testes so you should know what are the list of things you need to know the lanigo abnormal breathing pattern enlarged clitoris lower muscle tone less body fat small scrotum small flexible soft flexible ear cartilage characterizes the premature what is the main method of heat exchange in an infant incubator convection current convection autism ka characteristic features kya hota hai repetitive behavior delayed language development deficit in social interaction one of the favorite mcqs of the examiner when will the onset of autism is the favorite question of the examiner most children with autism shows signs in the first 18 months any time by age 3 so the onset invariably is at less than age 3 years so social interaction social communication symbolic or imaginative play their abnormal functioning is part of the diagnostic criteria so there is a qualitative impairment in social interaction communication there is a restricted repetitive stereotyped pattern of behavior interests and activities that characterize the autism is what you should remember down's syndrome hypothyroidism vsd brushfield spots there is a big list of things in downs whenever the mother is having insulin dependent diabetes caudal regression is the most characteristic feature of the diabetes associated fetal malformations 
How much potassium is required for a child? One to two milliequivalents per kg. Abhi aagaya batti marne wala item. Sodium content of the rhizoma. You have to be very sure. 45 millimoles per liter. So doctor, normal OR is rhizoma. Kya farak hota hai? Examiner, aapke kaan pakad ke puche ka. Glucose. 111 millimoles per liter, normal ORS. 125 is this amount. Don't forget. Ye batti barne wala cheese ke liye brilliance, intelligence, genius, top, kuch bhi nahi jirrat hai doctor. Jo memorize karna hai, pay hard karna hai, karna hai. There is no other option. Whether you are a super duper student or a student who never opened books in MBBS doesn't matter. Got me? So, 75 to 90 millimoles per liter sodium, normal ORS, but rhizomal 45 only. Potassium 20 normal ORS, but 14 rhizomal. Chloride 18 normal ORS, 17 rhizomal. Citrate 20 normal ORS, 7 in the rhizomal. 310 is the normal ORS, 300 is the osmolality of the rhizomal, is what you need to remember. Now, uh, one of us, one of our very good friend is saying, Sir, I still have your PGET books in individual subjects of the year 2001. Thank you so much for saying that. 2001, I still remember, it was the year when I joined post-graduation. Where my students were the toppers and I had a opportunity also to become a topper. Right. So, thank you so much for saying that, Doctor. So, old ORS, standard hypoosmolar WHO ORS versus Rishuman. Ek photo lelo, pocket mirako, kalke exam ke liye. The most common etiological agent for acute bronchitis in infancy, RSV, respiratory syncytial virus. Mumps ka, mumps ke bare mein, few yes and no statements, true and false statements, aapke man mein rena. Meningoencephalitis of the mums, it can precede peritritis. But salivary gland involvement is not just due to peritritis. And the patient is infectious even before the clinical peritritis enlargement. And mums sarcoidis is usually unilateral that is the reason it does not lead to infertility, is what you should remember. So, you should know incubation period of the mumps is 12 to 25 days. It is communicable one to two days before the parotid swelling until nine days after the swelling. And uh, parotid, sublingual, submaxillary, all of them are involved, not just the parotid. And it can be asymptomatic and even it can lead to earache, pain on chewing, decreased appetite, anything can happen. Once you start the iron therapy, in a six-year-old girl with iron deficiency, what do you see? Increased reti count always is the First thing, a brisk radiculocytosis is the important sign. Abhi aagaya, hum ek garma garam topic ko. Hemorrhagic disease of the newborn. So, to all of you, I like to tell you, one of the 957 topics, if you don't have the list, please call our helpline and take the list. And all these 957 topics are thoroughly discussed and made available as 1500 video lectures on the online MBBS.com video library. Take a chance to subscribe. Before we start the class at 6 p.m. every day, tsunami ho, earthquake ho, battle ho, emergency ho, 
we will have the class at 6 p.m. So, at the start, we will run it like a quiz program. The questions that we are going to discuss. 12 seconds, every slide will change. Keep punching your answers into the chat window. Be excited. That's when it may quiz katam. And already you exercise your mind. Then Dr. Murli Bharadwaj will come and then we will do the revision. So, Dr. Hemorrhagic disease of the newborn, early onset, late onset, all types you should know. The onset occurs 4 to 12 weeks of age to call it late onset. It can lead to intracranial hemorrhage. Intramuscular vitamin K prophylaxis at the birth is having a role. Baya, I mean, my best points about the hemorrhagic disease of the newborn. Chalo. You need to remember these are the, all the 10 points that you need to know. First, to know the classification. Early HDN, classical HDN, and late onset. Early hota hai, 0 to 24 hours, it is rare. It can lead to cephalohematoma, subgalial, intracranial, GIT, umbilical, intra abdominal bleeding. Why early hemorrhagic disease of the newborn occurs? Etiology kya hota hai? This is the favorite MCQ. Any maternal drugs like phenobarbital, phenytoin, warfarin, rifampin, isoniazid, which can interfere with vitamin K if the mother was taking those drugs that can lead to early HDN. And the risk factor is an inherited coagulopathy. Classical HDN. But yeah, classical hota hai two to seven days. Please don't forget. And uh, blood sample detect vitamin K injection pediatric nurse. So Jindagi starts with few shots. So 2% of the kids who are not given the vitamin K can go into this classical HDL. So it can lead to ear, nose, throat, mucosal, intracranial, circumcision site, cutaneous injection sites. They can be bleeding. So vitamin K deficiency, breastfeeding, they are implicated as etiological factors in classical HDN, not late HDN. That is what examiner is asking. Inherited coagulopathy can be caused for the class early HDN. Early Late HDN. Onset is one to six months. Intercranial GIT, cutaneous ENT, injection site, thoracic, anyway. Any cholestasis where there's a malabsorption of the vitamin K, like biliary atresia, cystic fibrosis, hepatitis, can lead to it. So what are the risk factors for the late HDN? Please don't forget, Doctor, risk, risk factors. A beta lipoproteinemia. In Asian breastfed infants, idiopathic. Generally, any warfarin ingestion, they all can lead to late HDN. That's what you need to remember. So early HDN, if you administer vitamin K to infant at birth or to mother, 20 milligram before birth. Classical HDN treated with parenteral vitamin K at birth prevention. Late HDN, parenteral or high dose oral vitamin K during periods of malabsorption and cholestasis, you can avoid late HDN. Barabar? Abhi samaj mein aagaya? Small, small changes right there. Small, small differences. Magar examiner, a small point ke upar ki khan pakdega. Agar, agar aap ready nahi hai to, khatam, 10,000 people will walk on you. Tetralogy of fallow. Easiest question, biscuit question. There is a ventricular septal defect, right ventricular hypertrophy, pulmonary stenosis, etc, etc. Breloch toxic shunt. Yesterday only we discussed all the shunts now. 
So aorta, pulmonary artery directly well off toxic. Then ascending aorta, descending aorta. If you connect with pulmonary artery, what do you call? Ascending hota hai water cell. Descending hota hai pots. If you missed yesterday class, please do a revision. Already that video is made available. In which condition left atrium is not enlarged? So typically, if you have an ASD, normally left atrial blood will go into right atrium. So left atrium apna load ko right atrium ke upar push kar le. So isliye why will left atrium enlarge? It does not enlarge in ASD. A one month old boy is referred for failure to thrive. He shows features of congestive heart failure. Femoral pulses are feeble compared to brachial pulses. Classical. Obviously, iota brings the blood to the lower limbs, not up there. So any coactation of iota will make the lower limb blood vessels become feeble. Classical presentation. Finally, Arya, prognosis of the Wilms tumor. What is the most important determinant? Typically, it is the histology and stage which are very important. So, doctor, in this context, I like to once more give a quick review of the most high yield area frequently tested in the NEET PG exam. Wilms tumor versus neuroblastoma. Dono mein abdominal mass hota hai. A symptomatic abdominal mass is the presentation of Wilms tumor. But Wilms tumor comes purely kidney ke andar se tayar hota hai. Infrarenal. Whereas neuroblastoma is extrarenal arising from the adrenal gland or paravertebral sympathetic ganglia. So since it comes from the kidney, it will be a displacing mass, mainly confined to the flank. Whereas neuroblastoma is a non-mobile mass and it is more likely to cross the midline. Please don't forget, this is a favorite uh, differentiator. Tomorrow radiology also, there is a favorite question. Radiologically also, a lesion, abdominal mass, renal mass, crossing the midline for the head neuroblastoma. Direct expansion with displacement of adjacent structures is well, but neuroblastoma will encase the vessels, aorta, etc. And Wilms tumor, kidney ke under se aare, isliye agar aap urinary collecting system deke to, pelvic LCL system, that all become displaced. Whereas neuroblastoma externally displaces the kidney, it is often calcified. It has a neural extension. So these are the points. Take a photo lelo aur yaha man me rakho kal ke exam ke liye. So if you come to the prognostic things doctor, histopathology tumor state. They are the most important deciding factors. Then uh, chromosome 16Q, 1P, they are at increased risk of relapse and death. High telomerase activity, unfavorable prognostic feature. Aneuploidy, DNA index, that is a prognostic feature. And similarly, vascular endothelial growth factor, angiogenic cytokine is also a prognostic factor is what you need to remember. So, that brings us to the end of this wonderful one and a half hour marathon session 6 to 7 30 pm har ek din milenge har ek din hum sab milke padhai karenge har ek hafte ek subject khatam karenge parallelly i also request you to share this youtube channel with all your friends everyone and uh, don't forget to subscribe to online mbbs.com video library, full scale grantors, and uh, 
10,000 MCQs on the Incas app. Everything is being provided to you along with this live classes as uh, at a small price of about 10,000 bucks. So please call our helpline and be part of this crash course. Good night and enjoy a great evening. Thank you. We will once more see you all tomorrow at 6 p.m.